NBC's Ryan Riley is reporting from Washington, D.C. Also with us, Rick Tyler, MSNBC political analyst and Republican strategist and founder of Foundry Strategies. Ryan, I know you did a deep dive on this. Give us a fact check here on some of the folks that Trump is calling hostages. Sure. So, you know, the vast majority of people who are currently incarcerated on January 6 uh, charges are people who have been gone before a judge, pleaded guilty, or been found guilty by a jury of their peers. Twelve individuals getting in a room, looking at the evidence, deciding they are guilty of some charges, maybe not guilty of others. And they are then sentenced by judges of both parties. What we really focused on in this new analysis is that smaller group, 15 individuals who are being held uh, pre-trial, meaning that they have not been convicted of any charges. And each of those individuals had an individualized assessment done by a federal judge who decided that they needed to be held for various reasons. Usually it's because there's overwhelming evidence uh, that they are a risk, either of flight uh, or, you know, there's overwhelming evidence of the violent conduct uh, that they are alleged to have committed that day. Um, and there's a worry about the safety of the public. Just three individuals to highlight there. There's one person who actually threw, is accused of throwing a bomb inside the tunnel that exploded and set off um, an explosion inside the tunnel where many officers were gathered. That caused officers to lose hearing for several hours, some of them days. They reported ringing in their ears. There's another individual charged with firing off a gun twice outside the Capitol during that ongoing attack on the west side of the Capitol. That individual, I've actually stabbed a man to death after January 6th, but before he was arrested on uh, the charges ultimately this year, after that video emerged showing him apparently firing off that weapon. And he also has a lengthy criminal record. Um, you know, there's yet another individual who's actually the fourth person to invade the Capitol that day. He was all dressed up in paramilitary gear, kicked the door open. Nonetheless, he was released initially on his January 6 charges. And then, lo and behold, he teamed up, allegedly, with one of his friends and plotted to kill the FBI agents who were actually investigating for those January 6 charges. His co-defendant in that case has pleaded guilty, admitting that the two of them conspired to kill FBI agents who are working um, on January 6 charges. Edward Kelly is still awaiting trial. There was some talk of a plea deal. That doesn't appear to be happening, but he is one of the individuals, one of those 15 who is being held uh, pre-trial because a judge made an individualized determination uh, that they are people who need to be held uh, for reasons of public safety or risk of flight, Chris. So, Rick, a former senior advisor to President George W. Bush got pretty hot about the idea of these rioters as hostages. Here's Carl Rove. Every one of those sons of who did that, we ought to find them, uh, try them, and send them to jail. And, and, if, and, if, and one of the critical mistakes made in this campaign is that Donald Trump has now said, I'm going to pardon those people because they're hostages. No, they're not. They're thugs. Why Trump has done this is beyond me. It is a mistake on the part of the Trump campaign to allow the president's impulses to identify himself with the people who assaulted the Capitol rather than people who stand for law and order. Yeah. The problem with that advice, of course, Rick, is that the campaign can't tell Trump what to do. We don't know that he ever listens to anyone but his own gut. So I guess, how is it a mistake? How does it hurt him? Well, it's not, it's not beyond me why he's doing it. I, I don't know why Carl's confused. I, I agree with everything Carl said, except for the reasoning. And the reasoning is very simple. Donald Trump wants to undermine the institutions uh, that are currently prosecuting him because he's up on 88 in, indict, felony indictment charges. And he wants the American people to believe that the whole justice system uh, is corrupt. And he wants people to do exactly what they did on January 6th, take up arms and weapons uh, and fight against the, ju the justice system, which is why, uh, as Ryan just pointed out, one of those guys went directly after the M FBI. Another showed up at Barack Obama's house because Donald Trump posted his address uh, uh, with a firearm. The good news is, uh, out of 1,300 arrests, 500 people have been convicted, uh, and many of them, seriously, some, some have uh, gotten a few days and some have, have gotten up to 22 years. But these are criminals. These are, uh, these are not patriots. Uh, they should not be celebrated in any way whatsoever. In fact, in the United States, we have an unblemished record, practically. I, I guess the Civil War would be the one exception. But we've transferred power peacefully and did so actually during the Civil War, uh, right up until Donald Trump didn't want to accept the results that he had lost the election to Joe Biden. Uh, and he, he orchestrated, planned, and directed an insurrection and cheered it on as those people assaulted police officers uh, who, by the way, 
were heroic in defending all the members of Congress. Remember, not one member of Congress uh, was either hurt or injured or worse. And that's because of the heroic actions of the police who, who Trump and his supporters claim to back the blue. Well, they don't back the blue. Donald Trump is responsible for the death of Brian Sicknick and every one of those officers who was injured on January 6th. And it's despicable and disgusting. And some of those members of Congress who stand behind uh, former President Trump are people who were hiding in fear on that day. Ryan, uh, something stood out this week from a specific case involving a J6 defendant. A federal judge took an extra step to condemn the normalization of the Capitol attack during sentencing. Tell us that story. Yeah, it was sort of remarkable, and that's Judge uh, Royce Lambert, who's actually a Ronald Reagan appointee. He's been on the bench for, for quite a while, but he's basically trying to set people straight about what happened on January 6th. Uh, in this case, he actually ordered the clerk, uh, court of the clerk, to mail out his comments to every supporter of this January 6th defendant who had wrote, written into them. He's essentially setting the record straight. You know, in another lifetime, if he wasn't this lifetime federal judge, he might have made a good journalist, because he really likes to set the people, uh, set the record straight on things. And he was explaining to them that what they were saying in the letters based upon what this defendant was telling uh, them uh, was not true, right? Like, he claimed that he was peaceful the whole time. Actually, evidence laid that out explicitly, that he was not peaceful. He joined a, this individual, a defendant, joined a push against officers, had a bullhorn, and was leading the charge uh, against officers that day. There's video, there's plenty of evidence of this, but a lot of people sort of refuse to recognize the real facts of what these cases were. So those comments are going to be mailed out to all the supporters uh, of, uh, of this defendant, uh, sort of laying out the evidence against them and what exactly the judge found. And the judge said, you know, listen, I don't take any pleasure in sending someone uh, to prison, but this is exactly what happened. A, you know, the the jury found him guilty. He was charged with these offenses. He could have taken a plea deal, probably gotten less time because the evidence against him was so overwhelming. But this defendant actually sort of went the sovereign citizen route, uh, claimed that he you know, really wasn't um, subject to the American law, um, sort of just tried to get himself out of the system altogether and was not really respectful of the overall court process. So ultimately got a longer sentence of seven years uh, in this case when, you know, comparatively, I think defendants who have gone uh, to who have taken plea deals have gotten a little bit of a, a shorter sentence. But it was quite a remarkable thing with Judge Lambert sending out these comments. He's made these comments before about how he worries that this is a threat to uh, the American future because there's such a disconnect between uh, what happened on January 6th and with all these politicians spreading a false narrative about the facts of what happened that day, Chris. Ryan Riley, Rick Tyler, thank you both. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the Cloud icon and enjoy it.